Okay, so we have our underpainting here and now it's time to add all of our color. So I am taking a look at my reference photo and I'm noticing what colors I have. I am gonna take a mental note of it from my case and I'm gonna start to think about what techniques I can use that we've learned in the last lesson to add onto our value paintings. So I like to start with the background first Remember the background is that top portion. It's usually our sky, clouds, things um, things you see in the sky. So the reason I start with the background first is because everything else we're gonna be adding on top. So if I were to go start to draw a tree right in front, by the time I get to my background, the tree's gonna be smudged, right? Because my hands are gonna be working on it. So let's start with our background. Let's work our way to the middle ground and then the foreground. So since I have a bigger area, I'm going to use that layering technique, I think, and it would be good for my background. So one thing I want to see you paying close attention to is seeing the colors, but also noticing what other colors are inside that one color. So I know the sky is blue, but I'm also seeing areas where the blue is a little bit darker and where the blue is a little bit lighter. After I add my darker and lighter blues, I'm also noticing the colors of the clouds. They look orange, but if you look closely, they also look a little bit pink and dark purple. So I really wanna see you looking closely at all of the different colors. Colors can really help set the mood and tone. So think about how you can emphasize or bring attention to certain colors that might help show the mood you're trying to express in your landscape. So I started with the biggest area of blue. Now I'm gonna go back on top with the oranges that I see. The reason I'm not doing the oranges first is because I see that way, way, way far behind the clouds is that blue sky. So I don't ever wanna be doing stuff that's in front first. I always wanna be doing the very, very farthest away back colors. You guys found out that chalk pestles can be very messy. You can always smudge your details away. So the stuff that's closer to you, like the clouds, maybe trees, that stuff you wanna try to do last. Since I'm working with my background, I'm doing the background color first, that blue. And now I'm going on top with my pinks and oranges to add those clouds. When it's your turn to add color in the sky, again, really notice those colors changing. Notice where the light is coming from, where's the sun? How does that affect the value of your color? When your color is going closer to the sun, it should be lighter or brighter. When the value is going further away from the sun, the value should be darker. Okay, now that my background is finished, now I can move on to my next layer, which is the midground. Notice how I'm not going to touch the background anymore. Um, I'm noticing all the different colors. I have a brown here, of course, because that's what we used first, but I'm actually noticing that some of the mountains in the background are actually kind of like a purple that fades in. So I'm going to lightly go over what I had here very, very lightly with purple, and then I'm going to gently blend it with my finger. One thing I'm not doing with this whole entire piece is I'm not taking my hand and I'm not um, spreading all my color everywhere. That's gonna make our drawing just one big, mushy, messy color. So I'm just continuing to be gentle. I'm not gonna touch the, the background anymore. I'm just gonna touch what's in my foreground. And since this is brown already, I see brown a lot in my reference photo. Um, so I might take a closer look at some of the other colors. Like I do see an orangey brown in there. So now I'm gonna like just layer some of that orangey brown wherever I see it. And I'm using that layering technique, right? The side of my chalk pastel. A lot of our details are already here. So we're just going in and adding 
more of a color and what we see we're adding on to what we already have This I'm going pretty lightly with my chalk pastel too. Again, since we have a lot of the details there already, I'm just adding, I'm just adding um, what I don't have. So I'm just looking at the color and gently adding it. I'm noticing my mountains are fading into the background. So now I can take my finger and I can just smudge or blend the mountains so they're a little bit foggier. I'm noticing where I have grass and what color the grass is. It might surprise you what colors you have, right? Right now I'm drawing like these orangey grasses, which if I didn't take a close look, I wouldn't have noticed that. Um, I just want to direct your attention to the different parts of the chalk pastel. You can use the edge of it, the very corner or smaller lines. You can use this part, a slightly um, flatter edge for something in the middle. And then you can use the very, very edge like you do for the layering technique for bigger areas. So you guys know how to already know how to control the material. Show me the different ways that you'll be using it in your landscape. Okay. So just to recap, I started with my background. I moved to my mid-ground and then my For foreground. details in the foreground, I'll probably be using the very, very tip or edge of my chalk pastel. For broader, more faded areas, like my background or the grass, I might use the broader edges of my chalk pastel. So think about the different ways you'll use it. like trees in the foreground when you go to draw them they're never touching the bottom tape they're usually somewhere up closer in the foreground and when you go to draw them I'll show you some tips now okay so when you go draw your trees again we're not touching the tape they'll probably be somewhere over here in the midground um, or the foreground but not touching the tape when you go to draw them, we're gonna kind of think of them as different letters. So they're gonna be the letter Y, but a bunch of different times. Take a look. So I'm drawing the trunk of my tree, but now I can turn it into the letter Y. I can continue to extend my Y and turn these this Y into smaller Ys. So now I have this big Y and I have these smaller Ys. I can keep going, adding more branches, but turning them into Ys. Another branch turns into Y. And I can keep turning these into Ys, but as I'm getting farther and farther away from my branch, my lines are getting thinner. Remember, my trunk of the tree is a little bit thicker. And you keep turning those into Ys and adding branches as you go. Now I have a tree, right? And now I can go ahead and I can add my color around it. Or your leaves. They might be green, they might be a different color. You need to take a close look. If your tree is filled with a lot of leaves and not like sparse like a fall tree, you can take the side of your chalk pastel and do that layering technique right on top. Now I have a big bushy tree and I still see all my branches underneath. 